Chapter 40, 48 Oh hey you. Tiona barged open my door and jumped on top of me. Gah ha ha. All my breath is leaving me all at once. One of my regrets sleeping in Twilight Manor, everyone is too easy going and let this girl get inside my room. Tiona, I told you don't run on the hallway like that. Tioni said like always reminding her sister. Era. He's dead. Tioni said after peeking her head in my room. Eh. Don't die. Aegis Kun. Tiona said in panic while shaking my body. Eventually dropping me down to the floor then strike my chest. Ugwu. Tiona. Stop. I said slowly before passing out again. What is happening here? Gareth quickly came to the rescue but didn't know what to do. So he stopped Tiona and dragging me by the leg to Riveria. Waking up, I quickly sit in surprise by the last memory I see. I quickly breathe heavily and touching all around my body check if it is still intact. Oh. You awake already. Riveria said after entering the room. The room is an executive room with bookshelf and sofa also chairs to sit between Riveria, Gareth, and Finn. Am I reborn into an elf? Is this the elf goddess they send? I said after looking at Riveria. She quickly slapped me on my cheek, you might hit your head in the process Tiona hit you. She said calmly. Being slapped I quickly shook my head rapidly, what the hell am I saying? I quickly backed to myself but remember what I said. Are you back already? Riveria asked looking at me. Yeah, I guess. Thanks. I said while massaging my head. Good, prepare quickly. We're leaving in five minutes. Riveria said while leaving me alone in the room. Without notice, there's a faint blush on her face while walking out. When I took some rest for a little bit, I started walking out of the room and I could see Loki walked wobbling left and right. Oh, good morning Loki-sama. Tired updating status? I asked while she quickly shrieking a little hearing me said, status. Oh, Aegeus. Please don't scare me like that. She said while entering the room I just went. Without thinking that much. I went to the courtyard while going toward the dungeon with Loki Familia's member. Nay. Aegeus Kuhn. I'm sorry about this morning. Tiona said while bowing at me sincerely. It's fine, just, please don't do that again. I said while patting her head. It became my habit to pat girls' heads for some reason. Oh 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 yeah, Aegeus Boya. Someone greeted me while Tiona already jumped hugging my neck from behind. Oh, Tsubaki-san. Long time no see. I said replying to her greeting. She looking at me and Tiona chuckled hard eventually letting out a laugh. Look like you got another one. She said while giving me a thumbs up. Hmm. Another one. Tiona tilted her head. Era. Aegeus haven't told you. I'm sorry then. Tsubaki said leaving me with a troubled face and Tiona, Tioni making a confused face. Nay. Aegeus Kun. Tell me, what does it mean? Tiona asked me while poking my cheek. Not now Tiona. I said while she nodded. After counting the member, we began being divided into two teams, while I'm being in team one. Dividing the team only making it easier for us on the upper floor since the place is more cramped than the lower floor. We will meet at the floor 18th and together continue the journey to floor 50. That's the plan so far. Aegeus San, please. Finn said to me with a lot of stuff behind him. I open Gate of Babylon and swallow them all up, leaving some resources and also a weapon to defend for. Hephaestus Familia member still kept their thing personally, Loki Familia member that acted as a supporter also kept their thing. But at least the weight had been lifted by a lot. Team 1, follow me. Finn said leading Team 1 which still a lot of people from my perspective. We eventually go down floor by floor. Letting the low-level member like level 2 killing some monster for Exilia. Reaching floor 8 some adventurer could be seen running from a distance, help. Minotaur has appeared. They yelled loudly. One of them stumbled and fall toward us. Riveria quickly crouched down and asked them, what happened? There's a minotaur on floor 9th. He said weakly. Quickly my mystic code and golden gauntlet appeared. Is there anyone left there? Riveria asked again. There is a white-haired boy fighting the Minotaur. He said. May it become a world where no one can hurt others and no one can be hurt. Pain breaker. I said the chant and sprinkle of starlight fly from the tip of my staff which I point toward him. Ace instantly dashed off leaving us, B 
being chased by Tiona, Tioni, and Bet. Raul, take care of him. Riveria said before me, Riveria, and Finn also chased after them. Arriving late, I could see Lily laying down on the sidewall when metal clashed could be heard from the hallway beside her. Riveria quickly looked at her wound while Finn confronted which the first time I saw, the King Otter which made me chuckle looking at him. After casting Pain Breaker on Lily. I went behind Finn, is this the mission your goddess give or you act on your own? Finn asked about to declare war with each other. I grabbed Finn's shoulder to let me talk with him. So, this is the King, Otter. Did you the one that wound Lily? Or maybe my brother? I asked while quickly everything being tensed. Maybe breaking one of your members' leg isn't enough. I might erase the whole business district. I said glaring eye to eye with him. Oh, I forgot. You hold up yourself in here for a few days. I said while kept my intense glare at him. He let out a small smile before closing his eyes, I'm not hurting either of them. He said before walking past me. Aegeus Cranel, I hope we could battle sometimes. He said. Good, I will be around to accept. I said replying to him which already walked back to the surface. Arriving shortly after Tiona, Tioni, and Bet. We arrived at the scene where Bell started fighting the Minotaur. Aegeus-sama. Please help Bell-sama. Lily said while her walk still wobbly. She gripped on my shirt and started pulling it. Isn't that the tomato boy? Bet said after squinting his eyes. Bet. Tiona shouted at him. That glanced at me for a second before turned to look at the battle, TCH. My bad. He said. Aegeus Kuan, please don't be mad. Tiona said while connecting her index fingers together after remembering the past where she laughed at Bell. It's fine. Right now, it's different. I said assuring her. I'm sorry Lily, but this is his fight. As a brother, I can't intervene. You also can't intervene. No one could while I'm here. I said warning the other to stay put. Eventually, everyone forced to watch his fight. Bet the first one to comment, he. He's level 1 right? What do you say, Bet? A month ago, I believe. You said he's a complete newbie. In just a short amount of time, he reached here. I know you also watch my spar with Aegeus San. He said like a bullet through everyone's mind. Everyone already started to think about me as an abnormality which no one would compare to but now another one came up with a spectacular battle and skill. Bell dodged everything thrown at him and also block it and redirect the trajectory of the attack while in a desperate situation using Firebolt to blind it. Eventually realizing, the sword couldn't cut Minotaur's skin, while his dagger is too short. Bell notice a chip on his sword and quickly think about something else. He blocked the strike and let the sword break while using the momentum to rotate his body and stab the monster's arm. Ruining all the muscle inside, he rotated his knife after stabbing it. In a rage, the Minotaur threw a punch at his guts which made Bell fly in the air. Regaining his conscious midair, he quickly gained his balance and landed safely. While rapidly dashing toward the monster. Bell used the chance of it through a wide swing with the left hand to quickly grab the sword that dropped from the monster. Out of idea after losing the sword that is used for a few days. The Minotaur returned to its instinct by throwing wide swing with his arms even the broken one. Bell got a quick cut using the length of the great sword it used. Noticing the damage became larger and larger on its body. The Minotaur quickly using his last resort and the weapon he got since its birth, its horn. The situation became tensed while I gripped my hand tightly without noticing it started to bleed. Only Lily and Riveria noticed it by standing behind me. Eventually, Bell charged at the same time as the Minotaur. Bell lifted the sword to swing at the monster, too early. Bet said while closing his eyes together with Tiona and Tioni. Not yet. Ace said while Bell once again dove below the Minotaur and stabbed Hestia's knife deep into the monster. Feeling the deep stab, the Minotaur growl loudly as loud as he can. Bell quickly pulled out his knife and pushed his hand into the wound and cast Firebolt. I noticed the monster staggering can't move about to lose its consciousness and Bell would kill it. I quickly opened my mystic code while runes appeared on it with Gate of Babylon opened above them. Belt quickly cast another Firebolt making the Minotaur about to blew up. Firebolt. Pain Breaker. I finished the chance at the same time the Minotaur explode while my heal only dropped on Bell. Looking at him standing there in mind zero because of losing mana but I knew he would wake up shortly. Riveria, what is his status? Bet quickly said in an agitated manner. Do you want me to see without permission? 
Riveria asked while looking at me. Bet realized this, TCH eventually gave up. Belsama. Belsama. Lily said while running to Bell. I shake my head while smiling, it's fine. You can look at it. I said to Riveria since all of the members also seemingly curious. Riveria started walking and looked at Bell's back and taken aback for a while. What is his status? Bet said in an agitated manner. Riveria then smiled and said, all status in S rank. What is your brother's name? Finn asked me. Bell, Bell Cranel. Ace answer for me with her being proud of her student. PFFTT. Just how much you beat him, Ace? I said couldn't help asking the question which made her pouting and embarrassed. I walked toward my brother and lay him down. Ajiasama. How's Belsama? Lily asked me in worry. Relax, my heel got to him early which would heal his body and mind. He will wake up shortly. I said assuring her. Ajiasan. Do you mind teaching me that magic? Riveria asked me while been curious for a while. I can't teach you not because I don't want to, I said shaking my head. Not long after that, Bell grunted a little bit before start opening his eyes. Where am I? He asked while looked at me and Riveria. You really made me worry, you stupid brother. I said while flicking his forehead. Nisan. It hurts. He said covering his forehead. At least you did well. I said smiling at him. You can move. I asked him while helping him get up. He nodded at me with a smile, hee hee. This is the first time, Nissan praised me like this. You really want me to kick you again? I said while my face grew darker. Hi. Bell became scared and hide behind Lily. I gave a heavy sigh, take this. I said giving the monster drop to him. This is. The drop from Minotaur. Use it well. Now, go back and be careful. Don't make Hestia-sama worried, take a day off. Train with Aisha-san, and Haruheim-san. I said lecturing my brother which for sure would go to the dungeon again the next day. Bell quickly gave his smile, let's go, Lily. He said. Yes, Bell-sama. Lily said. Without long, both of them walked back home. Going down the dungeon took weeks when finally we reached floor 50 after defeating floor boss Baylor. Even though I'm part of the expedition, I didn't partake in any fight except my own fight. My own aim is the landform where Hephaestus Familia asked to buy and monster drop. Jumping left and right, I always hunt on my own to cut down materials and also the monster for their item drop. My luck reaching S rank couldn't be underestimated at all. Let's see how Hephaestus gonna buy all of this. He 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 he. I said while killing the monster left and right. The more we dive deeper the more I could feel the jealousy gaze from people around. While they had to sleep anywhere anytime. I got to sleep on my own bed. Even though without noticing, Tiona started to sneak her way into the bed. I just ignored it thinking her as Haruheim sneaking like always. Reaching floor 50th was uneventful in combat term but for the resource it was bountiful. Forest tear, brave amber, and so on. All kinds of high level materials. Another event thing that happened was my hand get covered by golden light which later made an electric crackle sound. I quickly find an empty spot before releasing the skill by combining it with magic. IUO activated. Argonaut had been awakened. I heard the noise after releasing the golden light. Looked like it started. His adventure. I said unconsciously before going back to Loki Familia's camp. Finally reaching floor 50. Loki Familia started to prepare. I remove all the thing that is carried by me using Gate of Babylon. All of it was to make a camp for a few days where Loki Familia would scout the floor and draw the map of the floor. While waiting, I scout floor 50th and found a nice cliff to look around. My memory started to get mixed up recently. Everything started to get entangled by one another. You're not joining. Aegeus Kuhn. Tiona said behind me after looking at me that went missing. I quickly stopped clutching my head and looked at her. No. I will stay here for a while. I got my own tent. I said to assure her that I'm fine. After a moment of silence between us, she eventually sat beside me. Nay. Aegeus Kuhn. Do you know what kept me smiling? Tiona asked me out of the blue. I know. I said while making a longing face. Eeh? You are no fun. You supposed to say that you didn't know to let me tell my story. Tiona said pouting her cheek. 
it's Argonaut's story. Isn't it? I said answering her while the wind blew toward both of us. Tiona looked at me with a surprised face, how? Do you know? She asked slowly. I smiled at her and kissed her forehead, I can't tell you right now. This is as far as I could right now. I said while making her blush. Moo that's cheating. You said you didn't want a relationship right now but you keep teasing me. Tiona said grumbled. I'm fine though with a relationship right now. I said making her turned her head instantly toward me with a gawking face. She quickly pulled her leg closer and buried her head in her knees, you see, Aegeus Kuan. When I saw your brother fight that minotaur. I thought of him as Argonaut which the story had been keeping me smiling when facing harsh trial back at Telscura. That time, my feeling got shook hardly. I knew I like you while admiring Argonaut's story but liking someone just because of the story felt wrong for me. That's why I want to talk with you. Tiona said with a sad face. Everything depended on what you choose. I won't get angry if you decide to chase my brother. I also got a secret I haven't told you about. I already had a relationship with Shakti and Ryu. Both of them know about my decision about taking multiple wives. So, I won't blame you if you backed away. I said while smiling at Tiona. She shook her head rapidly, no. It's not about that, I don't mind about the idea of you had multiple wives and the reason for this talk is the opposite. I want you, Aegeus Cranel, as my hero. Your story. No, our story to be my support from now on. She said while looking at me. I got surprised by her saying that. Eventually, my smile softened and I hugged her, sure, let's make our own story. I said while tears fell on my cheek. Eh. Aegeus Kun. Aegeus is fine. Tiona. I said patting her. Then, Aegeus. Why are you crying? Tiona asked looking at me. I quickly wiped my tears, nothing. It's just happy tears. I said. So, could I hug you all the time? Tiona said already hugging me on my waist. Ha. Huh. Sure. I said while pulling her closer while the light at the ceiling began to dim. Shouldn't we go back? I asked Tiona which she nodded but kept her arms around me. Ha. Huh. Hold on tight. I said while moving her arms to my neck and giving a piggy ride to her. Without long we arrived at the camp that had been done and everyone already gathered around a campfire. Tomorrow, the main party will scout the lower floor. Me, Gareth, Riveria, Bet, Tiona, Tioni, Ace, Lafia, Aegeus, Tsubaki, Alicia, Elfie. The name called will be the main party. The other will had a day rest before mapping the floor. That's it, now let's rest for the night. Finn said, dispersing the other member. Aegeus San. Please come this way. Finn said leading me to the executive camp where he slept. Not only me but all the main party member also being called. Inside the tent is Tsubaki waiting for us with a load of weapons and wands scatter around. The one that I put below here is for Loki Familia. While your personal request, Aegeus boy. I got them behind me. Tsubaki said showing about 40 to 50 swords and 70 to 80 wands and staves which hard to sell for some reason. Thank you, Tsubaki. I will try my best to pay for all of them. I said while all the weapons vanished inside Gate of Babylon. Everyone from Loki Familia also checking each and every weapon. We went outside to try the weapon before tomorrow. I also went outside and opened Gate of Babylon which already gave light to the surrounding. Each and every swords, axes, dagger already appeared behind me. After counting the number I'm still somewhat satisfied. Next, I opened the mystic code with the golden gauntlet for addition the golden axe also came to my hand. Now, all the wands appeared from above which quickly my action gained attention from people around. Th. This. Just how many he could summon. Some of the members asked while looking at the golden light. After checking that there's no issue with the weapon. I quickly pull out my tent which already been done and only needed to put it with Gate of Babylon. The golden ripple appeared on the ground and moving upward showing a whole tent already being set up in place. I just need to put my bed inside and sleep. Preparing to go in the morning. The main party already gather in a small circle. Tsubaki-san, Aegeus-san. Lend us your help. Finn said toward Tsubaki and me. Very quickly we run down to floor 51 which surprisingly docile floor which a little monster here and there but they are up at the ceiling which harder to reach. Don't relax for a second. This place might be less crowded than the upper floor but the thing started to get really messy at floor 52nd. 
Finn said warning me and Tsubaki. Just when we arrive at floor 52nd. Nothing really happened but when we ran across the hallway. Fire pillar started to shot out from floor below. The floor became red and bulging big before it exploded releasing flame to the ceiling. Lafia stumbled upon a rock and fell down the hole. Fina. I unconsciously shout and jump together with her. I realized something before I jumped down about what happened to me, calling Lafia with Fina. Aegeus. Lafia chan Tiona shouted and follow us, together with Ace and Bet. No need to worry about us. I said to reduce the number of people jumping down. I caught Lafia in my arm and toss her to Tiona. Take care of her for a second. I said while opening gate of Babylon after seeing a small dragon down there. EIS. Let's crush them all. I said while EIS came flying out of gate of Babylon and landed down with me. While flying down, all the people that fall down the pit got snatched by EIS so they can land safely. I opened gate of Babylon full of swords while using mystic code and fire magic all around the room. In an instant, everything got obliviated into nothing but magic stone. Everyone came down from EIS and she lowering her head to me. Good work, EIS. I said while touching my forehead to her. She made a roar before entering back to gate of Babylon. Aegeus. Is that your tamed monster? Tiona asked while jump and tackling me. Yes, she's a beauty right? I asked her with a smile. Anu. Aegeus sama. Thank you for saving me. Lafia said and show her gratitude to me. Not long after waiting several hours. Finn and the other could be seen arriving at the room. Are you all okay? Finn said while checking our condition. Yeah. We're great right now. Tiona said already resting on my back. Nay. Tiona, since when are you this close to Aegeus Kuan? Tioni said while pulling Tiona off from me. No. Let me stay like this for a while. Aegeus, help me. Tiona said after being pulled. I'm sorry about her, Aegeus-san. Finn said apologizing to me. No, it's fine. I said to make sure it's fine. Now, only one more floor, we will reach floor 59th the lowest floor had been explored. Finn said while looking at the dark hallway going down. Don't be naive, Finn. Zeus and Hera Familia lie about their information. Their members are all level 9 and 8. Do you think they would stop on this floor? I said while stood up and walking closer to him. There's only one way to find out. Finn said and leading us down the floor. Walking down the dark tunnel which only light at the end of the road and wind whispering around us. At the end of the road, we got blinded by the light for a few seconds before looking at the scenery. This. Is. A forest. Tioni said after looking around. It looked like floor 24th. Lafia said after looking around. No, it's rainforest biome. The humidity around here is higher. I said after looking at the fog flying above the forest. Then we got a weird sound echoing through the distance. What is that sound? Bet asked with the alarmed face. Let's keep walking. Finn said leading up front. The plant looked bigger and covering the ceiling which made the road a little darker. We finally arrived at an open space. There's a lot of monsters but all of them ignoring us. In the middle, a plant monster eating another monster one by one. That's the growing monster that using magic stone. That said. This is bad, everyone comments the same. The floor quickly shook terribly while the ceiling turned purple. A disturbance happened while the middle monster shook badly and started to crack from its lower part. After the crack broke into small parts and dropped on the ground. The monster took a new shape like a butterfly out of its cocoon. It started to make a cry that traveled across the floor. Everyone quickly closed their ears by the loud scream. The monster took the shape of a woman with green hair. She started to smile and looked at us as if looking at old friends. That. That. Is a spirit. Ace said after taken aback a little. That's a spirit. It's different from the story. Lafia commented. All the monster is being used to grow this kind of monster. Riveria said. The spirit started to speak to us, Arya. Arya. I've been waiting for a long time. I've always been waiting, she said calling toward Ace. Let me eat you, so we can be together. She added again while blocking our way out. Finn quickly ordered us to prepare for a fight. Surprisingly, the monster stopped and looked at me, Noel. 
No. Why are you here? She screamed loudly. Everyone in Loki Familia stopped in their tract and follow her direction of sight toward me. Aegeus. Tiona tried to call me while what everyone saw only a sad face. I took a step forward, it's been a long time. I said looking at her with tears rolling down my cheek. No. Stay away. I don't want to be seen like this. Aergurk. She started to scream really loud. Making us cover our ears again. It's alright. I will help you. I said with a smile. It's been a very long time, Jupiter. She said while smiling toward me. Age. As. What is she saying? Tiona asked me. Just what are you, Aegeus-san? Finn also asked. Why is she calling you Jupiter? Like she called Ace, Arya. Everyone asked the same question. I closed my eyes for a second before looking toward Loki Familia with my red eyes, me? I'm a human. My name is Aegeus Cranel. I said like introducing myself. Don't play with us. Just tell us directly. Bet said already lifting his twin swords toward me. The name she called is not my name. Instead, the spirit contracted with me. I said while touching my chest. It's the same with you, Ace. Your magic and skill. Ariel, Lil Rafaga, Virga, everything is from your spirit, Arya. I said walking closer to Ace which made an astonished face. No. Arya is my mother and she's dead. She said gripping her sword tightly. My bad in explaining. Your mother's name is Arya, while your spirit named Ariadne. Which made it confusing. I said patting her head. Arya is the name I used to call her. I said with a sad face in me. Could you tell us in detail? Finn said coming closer to both of us. Yeah, after dealing with her. I said while someone came out behind the spirit monster. You. You are the lady who fought us on floor 24th. Lafia exclaimed after looking at her. Merapi, destroy them. She said. The spirit started to scream in pain and her eyes turned red. Everyone prepare to fight. Finn said again. Let me handle the spirit. I said which he nodded. Earth, howl loudly. Come down, come. Come. Lift the land from the abyss, black luster color, hammer of the star. The monster chanted its magic. Everyone stopped after feeling the pressure from the chant. It's high level magic chant. Riveria shouted. Riveria. Protection magic. Finn roared at her which everyone stopped advancing and back, gathering around Riveria. Made your pact with the omnipotent, she continued to chant. Ospirate of wind, ruler of the light. The protector of elf. Riveria started to chant. Burn the sky, tear the earth, unite all into one. The acts of judgment that brought destruction, she continued chant together with Riveria that kept chanting. Surround us, protect us with the song of spirit. As the representative of the highness. I order you in the name that had been granted to me. My name is Gnome. The manifestation from ruler of the earth, king of the land. Turned into the unbeatable fortress and defend us. In the name that been granted to me. My name is Alf. Meteor Swarm. Via Shilhaim. Both finished their chant. Aegeus. Tiona shouted inside the barrier noticing I'm still outside. Everyone held her down, calm yourself. Tiona. You can't go outside. Tioni and Finn said. No. Tiona started to berserk and producing intense heat from her body. Tioni forced to use berserk to hold her down. Relax, Tiona. I'm fine. I said before taking out a round shield with a cross in the middle. A metallic silver shield but looked small. Ossidy enclosed by the beautiful azure sky. Show your light once more into this world. Achilles Cosmos. I said using the noble phantasm which rewrote all the ground. Every ground started to tremble while building grew from it. The ground, changing. Just how much mystery does he have? Finn said while feeling the changes. This power. What kind of magic is this? Riveria started asking. Tiona and Tioni still froze on their spot. Meteor stone fall one after another but hit the city that came out of the ground. Revis already took a step back considering it to be an attack. Eventually, a city stood tall while the magic vanished. This is not the end. I said while whistling after gate of Babylon open. 
The war chariot came out pulled by three divine stallions. Omi battle chariot that accompanying me through countless battlefields. Travel through countless stars in light speed. Destroy my enemy to pieces. Troya's Trigoidia. The chariot rammed through the monster leaving a big gap on its stomach where the magic stone resided. Thank. You. Jupiter. She said before becoming dust flew in the air. Revis watched the scene that ended quickly and let her guard down. Letting me able to kick her back with ease. Are you the one corrupt the spirit? I said with my spear on her neck. She laid down there on the ground without any expression. I stepped on her stomach looking down at her. No, I'm not the one who did it. She said while looking at me. Then die in peace. I said while Finn yelled on us, stop it, Aegeus-san. Too late, I opened gate of Babylon and stabbed her. Why you kill her? We need more information from her. Finn said holding his head. Suddenly, purple lightning covered Revis which made her scream from the pain. Finn jumped back in shock while looking at Revis. I had killed your corruption. Now, stand up and walk your path of atonement. I said while grabbing the zigzag sword that I used to stab her. What had you been done to me? Revis said touching herself and noticed no wound could be seen. Her green eyes had gone, replaced with blood red eyes color as her hair. I release you to whatever can find you. I said showing magic stone from inside her. She looked at it with shock. I. I don't need to follow anyone again. She mumbled her words. I nodded my head and smiled at her and then. Revis looked at me with a gawking face. She lost in words while tears started to roll on her cheek. Thank you. She said while grabbing my hand to help her stand up. After the event, we returned to the camp on the 50th floor. Returning at the camp. I lose my composure when being dragged into a tent full of women around. Riveria, Tiona, Tioni, Lafia, Ace. Finn and Gareth still ordering the party and divided the team with high-level party members to look after low-level members. Since the purpose is mapping the floor, they don't need to fight the monster and the monster from floor 51 down to 55 only as little as the upper level floor. It's more like a maze than a dungeon. Nay. Aegeus. Can you start telling us? Tiona said hugging my arm. Em. Anil. I think it's best to not know the full story. I said after thinking for a while. No. Please tell us. Tiona said while the other nodded. How do you know about Arya? Is it related to you calling Lafia by Fina? Riveria asked. Aya you heard about it. I said scratching my own head in shame. Don't drag the conversation. Just tell it to us. Riveria said. Ace came closer to me and held my hand, please. She said sweetly which made me sigh hard. Fine. I will tell you. I said. Anu. Etu. How do I start the story? I said looking for words. All the girls already coming closer except Riveria. Basically, I'm a reincarnation from a certain person. I'm the reincarnation from Argonaut. I said which made the people around looked at me in disbelief. As hard as it is to believe. Bell also the reincarnation of Argonaut. I said another thing that made them shut their mouth for a few seconds before screaming, what? E. N. N. Both of us are. While Bell didn't have the memory. He had his dream and ambition. While me on the other hand, well, some got into me from the other person with the influence of another high-level being. I said not to complicated stuff about Malil. First. Let me said, I'm sorry. I said while doing Dejiza. Why are you saying sorry about? Tioni said asking me. Well, because keeping this a secret from all of you girls. Especially, Ace. I said patting her head which she accepted with a little smile. Please tell us from the beginning. Riveria said while listening to the story. I looked at her before giving up trying to cover up the story. A long time ago. There's a boy that lost his parents and he was saved by someone. Still, the pain of losing his parents haunted him every night. He started crying every now and then. One day, he met a half-elf that collapsed close to the forest that he used to pick firewood. He brought her home and asked people about what happened. Finally, he got news about the nearest elf village got raised for some unknown reason. When the half-elf woke up, he asked her about her parents but then looking at her expression. He knew that she also lost her parents. From that day on, 
he started to protect her, even calling her, his little sister. Despite the difference between them. With the feeling to protect her little sister growing. He started to dream of becoming a hero, to protect everyone that lost their smile. He started to act as if he's a hero to bring laugh for everyone. Back then, he would be called the clown. Eventually, news came around the village that the king is looking for hero to save the city. That's when the boy started his journey toward the city. Meeting every people along the journey to reach the city when finally he met a dazzling princess that running past him but since he didn't know the princess. He didn't do anything to her and let her just like that but that's the first time he fell in love. Arriving at the castle, he met the king. The king asked the boy to look for the princess that run away which then he found her by luck. After finding the princess, the boy knew the whole truth about the kingdom. Finding the princess is not for saving the city but instead, she would be used as a sacrifice to the monster that protecting the kingdom. After that, he made a contract with a spirit, Jupiter. The great spirit of thunder and wheeled his sword to defeat the monster and lost his sight in the battle. Being close to his death, the princess sacrificed herself and asked God to turn her as a spirit to heal him but with the cost of her life. So how was it? Pretty good for a short story right? I said with a smile to everyone. Then tell us why is she calling Ace with Arya? Riveria asked me again. Hmm it's because of her contracted spirit. Ace's magic is based on her spirit. I said while thinking for a while. In the book, that's written. Arya is the spirit of wind but Arya also Ace's mother right? I asked Riveria and Ace which both of them nod. How do you know that? Riveria asked me. Because Albert Waldstein is also one of Argonaut's reincarnation. I said making Riveria thinking harder. Then? Riveria asked. Of course, I had his memory. I said giving her another bomb. Wait. Then. Ajiasama. Are you her father? Lafia asked me after hearing me said that. Yes and no. Yes that I have his memory which made me part of her father but I'm not. I'm just another person that being born recently. I said explaining but A seems agitated and hugged me. Father, she said looking at my face. I'm sorry, Ace. I said patting her head. Then, please continue your story. Riveria said. Ah right. Everyone is a reincarnation of their past life. That's what the knowledge that even God believed. They called it 10.000 years of love. Where the people they love will get reincarnated again in this world. It's the same thing for us. I even met all of you before this reincarnation within this memory. I said while pointing at my head. Eh. I have met you, Aegeus. Tiona said in surprise. Tiona. Let him talk first. Tioni said while pulling Tiona down. Yes. I have met all of you. I said confirming Tiona. So, that's the reason you call Lafia by Fina? Riveria said looking at me with her serious face. Yes, when I go deeper and deeper recently. My memory started to get mixed up. That's why I let it slip by calling Lafia by Fina. I said answering Riveria. Please, continue. Riveria said thinking again. The spirit of the wind, Arya. Her full name is Ariadne. By the interference of God turning mortal into spirit cost us our life. In each reincarnation, we would never saw our old life. Each and every time, we always die young. The oldest age I have got is when my life as Albert Waldstein because of the god that started to walk among mortals and give us our blessing. But still, the curse gave us our punishment by losing to the black dragon that escaped. I said telling them. Then what's the connection with Ace? Riveria asked. Ace is. How you see. Ace is supposed to be Arya's reincarnation but instead born in the same era. That's why she's in a coma ever since she was born. That's why I and Arya tried everything to awaken Ace. That's when the black dragon attacked us. We knew our time has come and we had to die for Ace to live. I don't know about what happened next but looked like it worked. I said while rubbing Ace's head that's still hugging me. Then. The magic Ace got is from her spirit inside her. Riveria asked me. Yes. I said giving confirmation. Then what about you? I mean Bell used fire magic. You said that your spirit and bell is thunder spirit. Riveria asked again. Oh, that one. It's Ursu and Jupiter. Ursu is the spirit of fire, the spirit that contracted with Kratzo family. 
he let me his spirit to fight. I said remembering about Ursu. Then, you have two spirits. Tiona asked me. I don't know, but if Ursu is back. Then the Kratso family could also make magic weapons again. I said giving my answer. Next, next. How am I when you first met me, Aegeus? I wanted to know. Tiona said with excitement. Let's see. Tiona is. Olna. Olna Lucreus. You're a cold person that even never smiled once. I said after trying to remember. Eeh. So lame. Tiona said with a saddened tone. But I did see you smile. Before my death, I gave you my dairy. Argonaut's journal which made you smile. I guess you're the one that rewrote Argonaut's story. I said while smiling at her. Hmm. I see. I'm not so bad after all. Eh. Eh. I'm the one that wrote Argonaut. Tiona just realized at the end. It's just your past self Tiona. The you right now is impossible to write the story. Tioni said giving harsh judgment. Yeah. That's true. T, Tiona said. And no. Aegeus Sama. If you don't mind. Can you tell me about Fina? Lafia asked me while being shy. Ah, right. Fina. Is the half-elf that became my sister. I said smiling at her. Lit. Lit. Little sister. Lafia said while murmuring her words. Me? Ace said while looking at me. Ah. Ace, didn't I already tell you? You're Ariadne. My first love. Hee <laughs> hee. I said patting her head. No. That's cheating, Ace. Tiona said while dragging me back. Relax, Tiona. In this life is different. I won't push my feeling to any of you but I will still answer your feelings. I said to calm her down. After the story about my memory that mixed up. Ace became closer even though seeing me as a father figure maybe but after the story is done. Tsubaki, Revis, Finn, and Gareth get inside. Nice to meet you all, I'm Revis. I didn't have that much information on me since I'm only been inside the dungeon from as far as I could remember. The person that using me called herself Ayn. While the one that resurrected me call himself Enyo. That's as far as I know about. I'm sorry if I didn't have much value. She said bowing toward us. Come sit, all of you. I said inviting them inside since they're inside my tent. I'm sure you had already told Riveria about your story, Aegeus San. Finn said while walking inside making all of the girls flinched slightly. I won't pry into it. As long as Riveria didn't see you as a threat then we're fine. Even though I have been wondering just how much power you had. Finn asked me after seeing for himself that I just summoned a city to defend myself. Hmm. Right, I just about to get into it in my story. Everything related after all. I said making the girls even more curious. The power I got is from a different world. I said making them confused. No need to think too hard. It's a whole different world. No monster running around in the wild. No gods govern the world as of now. I said tell them to stop connecting one and one together. No monster. Is it a beautiful world then? Tiona said cheerfully like always. No, it's relative. For me there's a beauty on it and there's also the ugly side of humanity play around it. I said giving my thought. It's true. Even in this world there's always a problem. Not only in Orio. Finn said supporting my words. Then is your power come from there? Riveria asked since she's interested in my magic. Well, you could say that. I said. It's better to show it to you. I said while walking out. The other soon followed me from behind and we walked to find an open field. In this world, the first hero. Argonaut made a pact with Jupiter, the great spirit of thunder to wield its sword and erase the monster that haunted over the city. Right now, the gods and goddess also help give us power by giving their fauna. In this different world. We got power from a magic circuit where only selective people born from it which like people in this world whether you could use magic or not but that's for normal people while the other power. My power came from an ancient hero. The first of its kind. A long time ago, the gods and goddesses still walked the earth but quickly vanished which leave a mystery behind. Before they leave, a certain god made love with a mortal lady and gave birth to the first hero of mankind, a demigod. I start telling a story while we walked. 
and that power is given to me in this world. I'm sure you already know. This is my power. I said while making a golden ripple in the air revealing various weapons for them to see. This is my original power. I said giving them the truth. Then, how do you explain the other power you showed yesterday? Gareth asked. That's come from these weapons I wield. I said while pulling out Gibalg. This is Gibalg. The spear from Hero Ku Chulin. The spear of mortal death. Legend said the spear never misses its target. Each weapon had its power from various heroes. I said while playing around with the spear. And? What is its power? Tioni said while looking at the weapon which looked normal except the exquisite looked it had. I kinda didn't want to show it, since it might summon Juggernaut. He he he. I said while embarrassingly smile. But, other than that. I got the memory of him fighting. Finn should realize how different I fight with you using this spear than that spear. I said while pointing toward Meteor Spear. Nay. Aegeus. Tiona said hugging me from behind again which everyone had used to. Tell me what is that key? She said while pointing toward a certain key. Ah. That's my personal weapon when I got this power. I said while walking toward EA, a key as a weapon. Tiona said looking at it. It's in sealed form. Do you remember when I'm fighting Amphisbina and it disappeared? I said while everyone that saw nod. If I remember there's an alarming huge surge of power used into the fight. Tioni said. I combined two power. My spear right there, Meteor Spear could make the time stop for me to fight my enemy without any disturbance whether it is God or Luck. Using it, I could summon my personal weapon here. Its power is too big while I could make some adjustments to it but I could also destroy the world itself. I said while caressing Ye. Show me. Show me. Tiona said behind my back. Oh no. Nay. Tiona. Stop acting like a child. It's not a toy. Tioni said lecturing her. Eeh. It is fine, isn't it Aegeus? Tiona said looking at my face. Well, why don't we find another weapon for demonstration purposes? I said patting her head. Then if you could. Can you show us the power to stop time? Tiona said pouting her cheek. I couldn't use it to a woman. Ha ha ha. I'm sorry. The spear won't let me. I said. Ah. I want to see one. Tiona said throwing a tantrum like a kid. Hmm, I don't think a little damage will summon Juggernaut if you had a target. Finn said after thinking. I'm sorry, Aegeus San. I also want to see one. He said apologizing. Well, it doesn't have to be attacking weapon. I said. How about this, Ace use your Lil Rafaga on me. I said to Ace which she quickly hit her weapon and shook her head, no, she said giving me a quick answer. Ha Finn use your strongest attack. I said while saying it to Finn. Are you sure? Finn asking for confirmation which I nod. This is one of my defensive abilities. Ah flower that protect my people from defeat. Bloom bigger and show your rings. The seven rings that cover the fiery heavens. Row AIAs. I said while instead of one flower and six barriers that came out. Now it turned into seven flowers in bloom that appeared in front of me and Tiona. Hell fine gas. Finn roar while his eyes turned blood red and throw his spear toward me. Do you have to be that serious, Finn? Riveria said. The spear flew in high speed colliding with the flower and made a spark of fire but the impact from the spear could only crack the first flower made it lose one petal out of five petals before the spear itself broke into pieces. See? It still looked cool. I said to Tiona behind me that already glimmering with stars. How about the book you had with you? Riveria said while walking closer. Oh, the mystic code. This allowed me to command the wand or staff and fire magic simultaneously. I said answering her. Alright, that's all for the demonstration. I said clapping my hands together. Ah, I want to see more. Tiona said clinging to me. Why don't you come with me to gather material then? Tsubaki-san also coming right? I said toward Tsubaki in the distance. Of course, I need to find my own material too. Tsubaki said with a smile. How about you, Revis? You got any plan? I asked her which she shook her head. I will lay low for now to avoid attention. She said. 
A few days later, Loki Familia had completed the map for floor 51 to 52 and called it finished because of the amount of supply that kept decreasing. I could help with their supply, but what for, I got a lot of resources to sell anyway. Going up to the surface earlier than the schedule would help me tremendously. Also, not forgetting Revis which laying low and decided to stay in my camp. She didn't talk much or complain at all, so I just left her there to do her thing. With her in there, Tiona also decided to sneak into my camp not that I bother about it but my bed felt a little cramped with her way of sleeping. I only brought two beds which Revis used the other one. I managed to get to befriend some of Loki familia members such as Alicia Forest Light, an elf, golden hair, and green eyes. Elfie Colette, a human, brown hair and dark green eyes which is Lafia's roommate back at the Twilight Manor and she's basically the magician girl Chinibu of this world. Raoul Nord, a human, black hair and eyes which for some reason nervous around me and always speaking with stuttering words around me. Cruz Bustle, a chianthrope which always following bed around like his wolf pack or something, while he glared at me at some point. The last one is Narvi Roll, with her red hair and eyes. She's a timid person which always stumbled on something and looking shy but could turn serious when doing her mission and fighting. She's ordered to be with me while I'm gathering resources to help me choose the right material to bring since the information on the lower floor is limited. Aegeus. Are you sure you didn't want to stay at Twilight Manor? Tiona said while we're eating before going to sleep. Yeah, Hestia-sama won't allow it and even if Hestia-sama allowed it, I won't stay there. I said while munching the meat. Revis eat in silence while contemplating. She looked like a body without a soul while looking at the food. I won't blame her since she only ate magic stone before being free from the shackle that bound her. Eh. Why? Tiona said pouting her cheek. I got my family, Bell is my little brother while Hestia-sama well the first goddess that received both of us without judging our capability. I said explaining my reason to her. But. I'm also your family. Tiona said in rebuked. Not yet though. I said teasing her. What? I'm fine giving birth to your child. She said out loud which made even Revis looked at us in question. I told you, it's not about that. I know you are capable of bearing a child but still, marriage needed to be done first because if we did get married then our problem would need to be solved first. You are from Loki Familia while I'm from Hestia Familia that's the biggest wall that separated us right now. I said explaining to her. That's cheating. I still had to finish my contract with Loki-sama before deciding to leave the familia and it's still 5 more years. She said complaining about her 10 years contracts. Now that you said it. Did all Amazonas always fell in love with a person that beat them up in a fight? Well, I know that you're an exception but you see. I got Amazonas at home that keep pushing herself to me. I asked Tiona about Amazonas. Yes, for a long time their tradition is to look for a great warrior so they could once again be called the land of the great warrior. Surprisingly, Revis is the one that answered my question while Tiona looked at her and nodded at me. Yes, Aegeus. Even though for me, Hero is more of a great warrior. Ehe. <laughs> she said while punching the air. Then, do you know how to stop it? I never encounter such behavior before. I said asking about the solution. Did you not like her, Aegeus? Tiona asked after her shadow boxing and leaving her seat. Well, it's not that I didn't like her. It just felt forced I would say. I said while feeling odd. Hmm, for a warrior from Amazonas that had raised like that. Don't worry, their love is pure only for you. Hee <laughs> hee. Tiona said with a smile and giving me a thumbs up as if it would solve the problem. You know that's not gonna help at all. I said after looking at her with a questioning look. Revis, any idea? I turned to Revis. She still blanked out looking at the food before turning her head to me, you got beaten in a fair fight but don't worry. What she said is true, her love is pure only for you. She said also giving me a thumbs up. Is this turned into a comedic situation for some reason? I thought while looking at both of them. Ha, let's just finish eating and go to sleep. Don't look at it too much, Revis. I will make some more if you want and Tiona, tonight. Please don't kick my face. I said to both of them while going to bed. Eventually, it's time to go back to the surface. Everyone is hyped up since they succeed at reaching floor 59th the record where Zeus Familia had achieved while not so hyped up from Finn and the other executive member. While the report from Zeus Familia that the place is a glacier habitat. They just being laughed at by the report since what they found was forest landscape which meant that Zeus Familia had reached even deeper floor. 
along the journey with everyone mood is hyped by their achievement and finally got to fight since they reaching the upper floor. The low level member started to go on a rampage which resulted in some members got poisoned by monsters. Which made Finn announce his decision to stay for a night on the 18th floor, the under resort they would say. He ordered some fast moving members to go to the surface and get an antidote. We will stay here for three days. Take your time to rest well. Finn said as a captain. People started to make some camp to stay since accommodate this much of people in Rivera would cost a lot of money. I had thought of going by myself to the surface but Ace looked at me with an anticipated look toward me. Father, can we go to Rivera together? She said while Tiona and Tioni accompany Ace behind her. Ugh. Ace, could you refrain calling me like that? Just call me Aegeus will do, how about that? If you can do that, I will go with you tomorrow. I said which made her nod rapidly. Aegeus. Aegeus. Wake up. Someone said shaking my body. I open my eyes and look at a doll face close in front of me. Ace, let me sleep for a little longer. I said after removing Tiona's hand from my face. Un. Ace nodded like a good daughter before going out of the tent. She decided to take a walk around the camp before she heard someone screaming, Aerg. She quickly went toward the source of the sound. Belle, Lily, and Welf the red hair human fell toward the bottom of the stairs right at the place where Ace stopped her feet. Please, help, my party. Belle said weakly before going unconscious. Ace quickly ran to my tent and wake me up F.A. Aegeus. Wake up. She said shaking me. Hmm. What's up? I said after rubbing my eyes. Come with me, Belle Cranel got unconscious. Ace said which made me jump from the bed ignoring Tiona which wakened because of that. Show me the way. I said while following behind Ace that ran toward Bell and his party. Arriving at the place where Bell unconscious, I stopped there and opened Mystic Code to use Pain Breaker. After successfully using Pain Breaker, I summoned my chariot and put all three of them on it. Let's go back to the camp. I said toward Ace. Aegeus. Why don't you wait for me? Tiona said while running to us. You don't have to follow me, Tiona. I said while combing her bed hair. Tiona smiled happily while following us walking back to the camp. The chariot walked slowly while I dragged the harness. Is there something going on? Riveria asked after looking at my chariot. It's not a big deal. Everything is fine. It's just my brother. I said to her which she then walked back to her tent. Arrived at my camp, I lay all three of them using blankets that have been brought by Ace when I asked her. Are they going to be fine, Aegeus? Tiona asked behind me after I finished covering Lily. Yeah, just let them rest for now. I said while walking to my bed to watch them from there. I'm sorry, Ace. The trip would be delayed. I said to Ace which she nodded her head. It took a while and I'm the only one waiting and let Tiona and Ace use their free time doing what they wanted. Yuum. Ugh. Where? Am I? Bell said while opening his eyes. Took you long enough to wake up. I said making him shut his eyes open in an instant. Nisan. Are you the one that rescued me? Bell said to me. After he turned his head to me, he could saw his party laying beside him. Well San. Lily. Bell said shouting. It's okay, they're fine. I said while getting up from my bed. Nisan. Thank you. He said while crying in tears after knowing they're saved. Is your brother always this loud? I can't sleep in here. Revis said from her bed. Oh, you wake up already. I turned toward Revis which she looked at me. Stop crying you little white rabbit. Revis said listening to Belle crying. You ugh sob okay. Belle said holding his tears. Who, you could be a good mother. I said teasing Revis which glared deadly at me. It's just a joke. Don't take it seriously. I said to ease her up. She sighed and started to sit on the edge of the bed. Here, take some breakfast. I said while giving her food right in front of her face. Doesn't mean I forgive you. She said while taking the plate and start eating. Suddenly, the tent's door opened and Lafia got inside Aegea Sama. Have you seen? Ah. You. You. You're that human. Lafia quickly pointing her finger to Belle. She wanted to say more but noticing that there's me in the room which made her gritted her teeth glaring at Belle. 
She relentlessly let go of her words and looked toward me after exhaling her breath and adjusted it. Ajiyasama. Have you seen, Asan? She asked. I'm not sure where she went but she's going with Tiona. I said after thinking for a while to where they go. Aegeus. Someone shouted before went inside. Speak of the devil. I said after seeing Tiona, Tioni, and Ace together. I brought Tioni here ehe. Tiona said after getting inside. Ah. Ace-san, I have been looking for you everywhere. Lafia said quickly get up and went toward Ace. She is being approached by Lafia but she only tilted her head in confusion. Aegeus. I got good news, I had talked to Captain. He said that it's fine to let your brothers party here. Tiona said coming to me. Well, for now you should also rest or I could spare some time for a quick spar. I said toward her. Belle, be sure to wait here and look after them. You should also take some rest. I said to Belle while walking out with Tiona. You want to come to? Lafia, Ace, Tioni. I called each one of them. Wait. Nisan, I'm coming too. Belle quickly said. You should get some rest. I said flicking his forehead. It, but I never saw you fighting. Belle said while pouting a little toward me. I smiled at his growth, at least his awareness on something. Alright, you can come but just watch from the side okay? I said leaving the tent. All of us eventually walked finding a place where usually Loki familia used for sparring. Nay. Nisan. Belle said whispering toward me. Can you stop taking a distance with Ace like that? You're bothering me instead. I said with a little glare at Belle that decide to hide on my left while Ace on my right with Tiona on my back. Ha. Huh. I can't help it Nisan. These people are too bright to walk with. Anyway, Nisan. This is a dungeon, right? How is the place so bright? Belle said after grumbling to me. Hmm. Ah, uh, yeah. This is your first time here. The light is from the crystal at the ceiling. For some reason, they lose their light when outside turned into night. Pretty cool, right? People call this place under resort. I said for explaining the light inside the dungeon. He. This world is amazing. So many things I never had seen before. Belle said while looking up to the ceiling. Ah. We had arrived. Tiona said tapping my shoulder while pointing toward the land in front of us. The place is used by some people that decide to get stronger after the expedition but all stopped when we arrived. A certain elf could be seen started running toward us, Ajiyasama, what took all of you here? She said with a ragged breath. Is there any problem? I want to use some space for us, but if there's a problem, I would wait. It's not like we are in a hurry. I said since she seems in panic when running to us. No. No. I'm just asking. If Ajiyasama wanted to use the space then you're more than welcome, and he is? She said in a happy tone and asked about Bell. He's my brother. Please look after him. I said smiling at her. She looked smitten for a second before gaining herself and turned toward the crowd. She nodded at them which made them quickly stop and form a line and sit at the side. Just what are they doing? I asked myself looking at them. Alicia. I called Alicia which looked at me with a smile on her face, it's okay, Ajiyasama. You can have as much space as you want. We will watch from the side. She said before dragging Belle with her. Listen here, white-haired boy. I don't care if you're his brother but don't get in his way or I will cut you myself. Alicia threatened Belle while dragging him which made him sweat and smile wryly, yes. Belle said weakly. Nay. Alicia-san. I know that this is a spar, but why my brother standing alone and Tiona-san, Ace-san, and also Tioni-san stand together there? Belle said after sitting quietly at the side. You. Are you really his brother? Alicia said glaring at Belle. Alicia-san, just let it slip. Let's just watch the spar. Lafia said to Alicia. Lafia-san. Alright but don't think I would let it go if you asked something that foolish again, human. Alicia said giving last warning to Belle. M. It's okay Alicia San if that happened. I will blast him off with my spell. Lafia said with her darkened face and ominous aura around her. Hi-yi. Belle shrieked and start crawling to the other side of the line. I opened one gate of Babylon and pulled out a sword. Are you sure you won't pull your spear, Aegeus? Tiona said while holding Urga her swords. 
Tioni using her twin dagger and ace pulled out her desperate which is the blue sword she had. It's fine, Tiona. It's not like that is my main weapon. I said while holding Durandal in my hand. A thin double-edged sword with an orb at the bottom of the hilt. The sword that has been held by Hector, the Prince of Kingdom Troy and Amazonian Queen Penticilia. The sword itself originated from the Gate of Babylon. Are you girls, ready? I shout out loud for them to hear. The nodded and took their stance, then come at me. I said while all three of them started to rush at me. Tiona took left and Tioni took right while Ace in the middle. I dashed and appear in front of Tiona, if I'm this close, it's hard to swing your sword. I said which being welcome with her panic face, oh no. She said while rotating Urga and jump back a little. I parry Urga that coming from below and about to strike her using a kick but disturbed by Ace coming and made me bend my body to the right to avoid her sword motion stabbing toward me. While dodging, I used the momentum to send a kick to her abdomen instead which she couldn't dodge when she's in the air. Without stopping my body, my jump turned into a back roll and letting it move by the flow. Tioni came behind Ace after I sent her flying and about to stab me with her dagger. Nice cover up but not enough. I said while using the sword, I aimed to cut her by making a vertical slash in my back roll. Noticing the silver light in my sword. Tioni immediately crossed her dagger to stop my slash and making me throw her to the other side by locking the sword. Oh Uriah. Tiona shouted while slamming her great sword from above to cut me in half. I rotate my body and send her a kick to her face. Don't panic just because you lose in speed. I said while chasing her flying to some distance. She already flying leaving Urga stabbed to the ground. Looking at her weaponless, I throw Durandal into the ground in front of me while kicking her feet so she could turn her body and land on her feet. Don't stop after you land. I said while giving her a jab to her face. Ace already launched herself after landing and close to me. I kick the Durandal's hilt making it rotate to block Ace's strike and send her another kick while dodging Tiona. Anyone could fight using its surrounding. You focus too much on me while forgetting my sword on the ground. I said before sending her sword flying from her hand. I grabbed her hand and throw her to my right where Tioni about to strike. Tioni quickly stopped her advanced and get thrown together with Ace. Her daggers slipped out and also dropped to the ground. After that, the continuous fight continues without any weapon on either side. After using Meteor Spear for too much, I could use the knowledge of Pancration with it. Loki Familia members had no response after looking such long sparring. The dust scattered around the field but they could still observe clearly what happened there. In the middle of the field AG is standing alone while all three girls lay down beaten up on the ground. No single wound could be seen on his body but the same couldn't be said on the girls. They got surrounded by a light which produced from pain breaker where the wound healed at rapid speed. You really didn't show mercy even to your girl. Aegeus. Tiona said from the ground. Alright, stop whining. I said while picking her up in Princess Carrie. Hmph. For some reason, Ace pouting while looking away from us which made all three of us including Tioni looked at her. Ha. Huh. Okay, Ace. You could get on my back. I said to her but she kept making the same face which made me and Tiona smile wryly. I looked at Tiona and she nodded at me, so I put her on my back while moving toward Ace and carry her in a Princess Carrie. I swear that I could hear people shouting, Kaya, behind us. While Tiona latching on my neck and Ace in my embrace, only left Tioni in the ground. Not to make it awkward I quickly said to her, Tioni, we will be on my tent if you looking for us. Bell. We're going back. I shout for Belle to hear and walked out of the place ignoring all the members there. Ah. Hi, yes. Belle said about to run following me. Wait. You, come with me. Alicia said pulling Belle toward the forest to talk about something. Lafia still there watching me carrying Ace in a princess carry with a smitten face as if looking at her wildest dream. After going back to the real world, Lafia started searching Belle but noticed that he's gone which made her gritted her teeth in anger before leaving the place. Aha, ha. And no. What can I help you with? Belle said laughing awkwardly while being stared by Alicia. You're his brother right? She said without much change to her expression. Belle gulped before nodded at her. Great, how is your brother at home? What did he like? Do I have a chance? I mean no, I can't. It has to be Reveria Sama. Alicia quickly denied herself. I'm sorry, Alicia-san right? Belle said toward Alicia. 
Alicia looked at him before nodding her head. I don't think you could match people like that. My brother never liked it. He said while smile wryly. What do you know? You don't even know how strong your brother is. Alicia said observing Belle from up close. I don't know for sure but he's my brother after all. Bell said but this time he said with full confidence. And I think, you would have a chance if you believe more in yourself. My brother is a nice guy after all. He said. Alicia looked soften a lot after hearing him said that, fine, I will try my best. Alicia said while playing with her golden hair. That doesn't mean I trusted you though but still I need your advice. She said. NN. I will help. Bell said smiling happily like an innocent child. Then tell me what should I do? Alicia said with enthusiasm. I. I. I guess we should increase the amount of interaction with my brother. He said while Bell knew that he's not even sure with his own answer at all. I, fine, we would go with your plan. Alicia said since she didn't have any plan. Both of them eventually moved toward Aegeus's tent. So many people could be seen inside since the situation between Revis and Ace still kinda awkward. Revis got to sit down on the floor while Ace and Tiona used the bed for resting and A.G. is sleeping in his own bed. Oh, Belle. Where have you been? Hmm. Alicia-san. How rare. I said after notice someone came inside. A.G. Asama, please just call me Alicia is fine. She said with a wide smile on her face. Hmm, sure. Alicia, thank you for bringing my brother here. Do you want to eat with us? I asked her. M. Anil. I. Can I really? She said while shying around. Of course you can but we're going to rest for a while after the spar. You also just spar right? Take a rest for a while, make yourself comfortable. I said while going to sleep again covering my sleeping time that being disturbed by Belle's arrival. He. Alicia San, you want to get close to Aegeus right? Tiona asked while turning her head toward Alicia since she got ache around her body after the sparring, along with Ace beside her. What? What are you saying, Tiona San? Alicia said while her face became red from the embarrassment. Then. Why are you sitting there? Tiona said with a smirk on her face teasing Alicia since she just sits at Aegeus's bed with Aegeus sleeping on it. T. T. This. I just want to rest. She said trying to find an excuse. Ma. It's fine. I'm sure he won't push you out without any reason. Tiona said while closing her eyes when she looked at the ceiling to go to sleep. Alicia quickly glared at Belle for giving her a suggestion to sit there. Making Belle flinched and quickly pretend to sleep in his blanket between Wealth and Lily. Revis decided to sleep again on the floor with a new blanket she put there. Eventually, Alicia is the only one being left alone in the tent. She sighed heavily before she slumped her body on the bed spontaneously. She then turned her head and almost jumped in fright looking at Aegeus's face up close. Her face blushed with deep red color and she buried her head in the pillow thinking so many things and the possibility of her future together with Aegeus before losing herself in a dream and also sleep on the same bed with Aegeus. If you like this content, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you later, bye bye.